Hey guys, Mark from Oceolic here. Um, it's definitely been quite a while that I've last done a, a YouTube video. Um, yeah, but which is because I wanted to first rearrange my, my desk so I can shoot the videos from there. Plus, I got myself a new Canon, a 70D, plus a, a Lavalier mic. So finally also the, the audio and the video are going to be a little bit uh, better. And especially on the audio side, there should be quite an improvement. Um, yeah, as you might know, the first videos we've done, they weren't, uh, the, the audio wasn't particularly good and then I did it with like a headset on, so just some random gaming headset and uh, I wasn't very pleased with the, with the end result. Um, yeah, but now that I've fixed this, uh, now that I sorted all this out, the audio should be much better, the video quality should be kind of like okay. And yeah, so, um, what I'm going to talk about today is MSI, MSI's brand new Z270 X Power Gaming Titanium motherboard. It's uh, the flagship model from them. And um, yeah, it's out on the market since like the beginning of this year when Intel launched the Z270 chipset. And yeah, let's have a look at this uh, nice little board. So as you know, the, the, the Titanium series from MSI, they always come with this black and silverish uh, color scheme. That's why the box is also kept in like black and silver. Um, yeah, first of all, we have this flip cover here featuring the board itself. If we open it, we already get a glimpse at the board through like the anti-static bag, plus a list of all the features which are there. We're going to talk about those when I have the board in my hands. So yeah, quickly close this again. And we switch to the back, we see, we see some more feature list and uh, another picture of the board. So, yeah, that's kind of it. Nice little box, heavy packaging, well protected, cool. So, let's get this thing out of it. You get your usually like two-piece thingy, one for like all the peripherals or accessories, at which we're now going to have a look. Comes in a black little box. Let's open this one up and just go through the the contents like, well, what content do I have? So here we have the IO shield, apparently. Then what we have here, an SLI connector. Then some screws to attach some things. I guess it's this one. No, this one is attached with like rubber strips and stuff. Uh, that's the OC dashboard. You get like quite a few features here. You can like, you have like a power button here and you can like increase bus frequencies and stuff. You have a reset button. Um, yeah, cool feature. So for all you overclockers out there, this is the kind of tool you want to use on this board. Um, some probes, like basically tips for probes to attach your voltmeter or whatever you want to attach for extreme overclocking as well. Um, some cable for the Mystic Light feature to attach your RGB LED strips. Then yeah, the cover which I've already removed because I've already re reviewed this board and the review is online on ocholic.ch and you find a link down in the description. Nice little st sticker with a dragon on it. Then uh, USB 3 cable. Some cool titaniumish looking silverish uh, SATA cables, which go very well with uh, the looks of the board, general design. Then what we have here is um, the USB 2 expander. So basically, you go in. You connect this with uh, the board, give it some power, and then you get four additional internal USB 2.0 header, and there is some Vel Velcro tape on the back to attach it somewhere to your case. So, rid of this, uh, more SATA cables, and then we have like all the documentation, manual stuff, some quick guide thing, driver's disk, uh, some stickers for your SATA cables. Uh, the full manual, then we got uh, some thank you thingy and telling us to register, and some more quick install thing. 
Okay, that's been it with the accessories. Yeah, I'm also trying to get this done a little quicker because that's what you, what some of the guys suggested in my in my earlier videos that I was talking way too much about the box and the accessories and whatever. So let's grab the board. Yeah, as always, nicely packed, a nice static bag, well protected. But yeah, now we finally come to the point where it becomes interesting. So this is the new titanium board from Amazon Z270 and I have to say personally I really like this color scheme. Um, personally I find these the, the most beautiful boards that are out there these days and um, yeah just a simple fact that that the PCB really does look different than, than all the others like it's not black for instance um, makes it makes it stand out really well. Okay so what we have here on this board, um, apparently you have, um, or we have here four PCI Express slots, which are wired with 16 lanes, 8 lanes, 8 lanes, 8 lanes. Then we have two PCIe 1X1 slots, wired apparently with one lane. And one of the coolest features about this board is that it comes with three M.2 ports. Um, they're all wired with four Gen 3 lanes, so they're, they're really, really punchy. You can even rate those things, and then you get the, the MSI uh, shield, which is supposed to help you with uh, cooling of your, um, of your M.2 SSD. Although there's been some, some, some testing from, from other sites uh, which showed that in the case of double-sided M.2 SSDs this little thing could actually um, be a heat trap but in the case of single-sided SSDs whenever this one is in touch with the controller or yeah then it actually helps to like spread the heat more evenly. Um, yeah, if we go here, we have here our game boost knob, so if you want to do so while in Windows, you can just like turn this one and it will increase the clock speeds of your of your CPU. Um, personally, I'm not really a huge fan of automated overclocking things. I prefer to do everything automatically and um, I would suggest to to you to do so as well but if you want to give this a shot it's certainly a, a, a cute little feature to have. Here you have your power and your reset button, um, a USB 2 header, a USB 3 header, more USB 2 headers, um, this is the um, audio front panel audio connector and yeah but yeah let's continue to like uh, the storage connectors. Let's talk a little, little bit more about those. Um, MSI actually decided to go for a U.2 connector, which you see here. Although, I mean, U.2 SSDs, they have never been really popular. The standard has only been adopted by Intel with the um, 750 series SSDs. And so far, it's also not looking like there are going to be more of these SSDs with U.2 connectors. One reason might be that generally, usually they are just really fat. I mean, they're twice the thickness of a, of your standard uh, two and a half inch drive. So, yeah, honestly, personally, I I would not put a U.2 connector on a motherboard these days because it's simply that the standard has has not like developed and uh, vendors didn't adapt to it. Um, nevertheless, as I said, I mean, there are the three. M.2 connectors you have, so that's already a very a very nice thing, and it just like it gives you a lot of uh, flexibility on the storage side of the board. Apart from that, there are like six angled SATA 3 connectors and two straight ones, the ones you can see here. Um, kind of like kind of like a nice layout. Honestly, I prefer it or I like it when they're not just like the angled ones, so, because in, in certain cases it does make sense to have uh, straight connectors and not just angled ones and apart from that I mean at least on, on the front one on the, the one really at the edge of the board of the SATA connectors you could also go with a, with an angled SATA cable so 
here you also have your 90 degree thing um yeah if we continue we have the atx power inlet and apart from that there are quite a few more power inlets like up here we have the a pin plus an additional four pin and down here we also have like another six pin which should help us stabilize uh, the power delivery if you use more than one graphics card uh, apparently these boards like uh, the way they're they're configured and the amount of lanes are available from the um, from the latest processes from Intel the seventh generation you can only do only SLI you can't go for for triple SLI or quad SLI but it's useless anyway since it's not really supported by the drivers uh, from Nvidia anymore um, yeah and in that case you'd you you'd want to use the first and the third slot so your graphics card like the cooler has some space in between to breathe that's also cool that there is always one free slot basically in between the pci the the, the full-size pci express slots um so yeah there is not going to be any there are not going to be any issues with uh airflow in the end um yeah if we continue then we see like here we have this little connector for your OC dashboard um, this one is to, to plug in all the, the different tips which I've shown you in the in the accessories which you then can attach to your voltmeter or temperature meter or whatever and um, yeah apparently also one very important thing is like the positioning and the simple amount of fan headers you have one down here at the bottom edge then you have one here below the U2 connector then you have one here uh, which is right above your first PCI Express slot um, then you have one more up here and one more here so it's really it's really simple it's really simple to and another one up here so it's very simple to connect like a lot of fans especially if you have like a huge tower cooler or something which uh, has like two or three fans you have like the, the fans the, the fan headers available right here um, yeah that's kind of it on, on that thing and then one of the one of the best things about this motherboard is actually its power design um, it's a it's a you see here it's a 10 plus 4 phase design you have 10 phases for your CPU and four for your iGPU and what MSI did is they went for uh, for power stages from International Rectifier and also the, the PWM controller is from International Rectifier so and from their lineup they even chose the, the most high-end ones like phases that can cope with 60 amps and overall this is a, a really really powerful power design which is yeah I've honestly so far I've not seen any other board from the Z270 generation from any other vendor which which can compete on this level it's really like it's it's very very well done yeah, apart from that you see like the the nice heat sinks there also nicely designed and you have a little heat pipe six millimeter flattened one down there and yeah that's kind of it on the on the PCB itself let's have a quick look at the connectors as you can see there is a PS2 then we have here two USB 2 ports we have here a clear CMOS button, another USB to zero port, then we have one, two, three, four, five, six USB three and two USB 3.1 ports. So the, 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 those four are USB three and those two are USB 3.1. This is a type A and a type C. We have two um, gigabit long connectors here, which personally I, I like it in the case of a of an enthusiast grade high-end motherboard and we also get a display port and an HDMI port plus the, the audio panel with uh, the analog 
inputs like the mini jacks and the optical SPD. Um, yeah, I mean, as I said, personally, I think this is like one of the most beautiful uh, Z270 boards out there. It certainly features a great power design, which is very, very high end. But yeah, as you can imagine, this much high end is going to cost some money. And at the moment, we find this board on, um, we usually check guidesalts.eu for about 330 euros. I mean, keeping in mind this is this is a Z270, and still it's like not going to be more than upper mid range. I find any any price above three hundred euros is is like too much. Um, having that said, I would not blame MSI at this point because if you look at all the or the pricing we had with Z270 and Z270. Uh, the different boards, they all, or if you have like the former titanium board, the Z170 used to be 300 euros or less. And this one is 330. So there is this 30 bucks on top. And we see that basically with all the models lately with the Z270. It looks like from the previous from the previous generation the price has just been increased by what say uh, 22 30 euros on the same model the whole platform has just gotten even yeah even more expensive let's put it like this and also the cpus for it have gotten more expensive i mean if you compare the 7700k to the 6700k 6, also there is a uh, quite a price difference um yeah one last thing on this board if you go buy this and if you want to have a system that really looks nice, personally, I, I love this combination. If you go with like four of these sticks, I mean, come on, they're just like, they're absolutely, they're just a perfect match. Apparently, yeah, you don't put them in the CPU socket, that's for sure, they go here, but like I'm too lazy now to put them inside. Okay, guys. I don't know what else to say about this motherboard. I've done all the testing on Oceaholic. If you're interested in like the detailed results, like let's uh, just have a look in the description and check the check the link. You find like the very detailed review on what is it, 25 pages. Um, if you want to dig into performance and all this kind of stuff, you find all the results there. Comparing and they're being compared with like uh, lots of other boards. We actually compare Z270 and Z170 since we're, we're using the same CPU. We've not switched our, our test pad for socket 1151 uh, to the new 7700K. We're still testing it with a 6700K and that allows us to, to be able to compare Z270 to uh, Z170. So guys, yeah, thank you very much for watching. If you have like any feedback, please post a comment below. If you like, hit the subscribe button. And if you don't, well, yeah, then you don't. Thanks very much for watching and have a good time.